This video is brought to you by... Actually, no, not even my wildest dreams. Anyways, hello everyone, welcome back to this abandoned channel. Um, in this video, we're going to be discussing my Yashica T4. We're going to be discussing how I got this camera, why is it so popular, and is it really worth all the money that it's worth. Anyways, uh, yeah, sit back, relax, pop some popcorn, and just click off this video while you still can. There is no point to this video. This is a um, garbage camera. Actually, please don't go. I remember it like it was yesterday. My professor who taught me how to shoot film, gross, gave me his broken Yashica T4. I used quotation marks because it was technically broken when he gave it to me. Uh, I put a battery inside of it. Turned it on, nothing happened, took the battery out, cleaned the battery contacts, put the battery back in, and lo and behold, it worked. When I received the camera, it did not look anything like this at all. Um, the door has since come off, um, it's gained a million scratches, it's been dropped, kicked, sat on, soaked in water, you name it, this camera's been through it, and it somehow still works to this day. Anyways, that's that's the short story of this of this camera. Um, yeah, I got it for free. I didn't pay a single dime for it. It was technically a broken camera. I asked for it specifically because it was broken because I wanted to I don't know destroy it into a million pieces for a video to piss off my viewers. But it worked. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this camera works. So here we have the Ashika T4. So the way this camera works is that you're supposed to flip the switch open and the lens should come out. But basically I had to take a few photos in order for the lens to come out. And there you go. Once the lens is out, it means it's ready to take a photo. Of course I had to cover this with tape, otherwise I'll hate myself. So right here on top of the camera we have our super scope, which is a waist level finder essentially. To use this feature, you basically hold this down to your waist and compose a shot and then take a photo. Moving on to these small buttons here to the side, this will be your flash on, flash off button. And then this button to the side of it is your self timer button, which I completely forgot to film myself demonstrating this, so I apologize, I don't know what I'm doing. Moving down to the bottom of the camera, we have a rewind button, tripod socket, and our strap hole, which doesn't exist anymore. So now the back of the camera above the codex sticker would be your viewfinder and your flash on, flash off indicator. Now to the side of the camera, you will find your battery compartment, and there it reveals your battery. Now to open the back door of this camera, you would simply just pull this tab down. So normally the camera would just open like this, but of course my door completely snapped off. Uh, again, I'll explain later. Load your roll of film in here, drag the lead into here, and then close the door, and the camera should wind all by itself. Of course, what I have to do is basically just uh, load the film, feed it through the door there. Once that's inside, I go ahead and attach the door, close it, and there it is, my film has caught. Once you saw those lines moving, that means your film is rolling. If the lines aren't moving, that means your film has not caught. Of course, my camera needs to be taped up, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape it back up. Tape it there, and then make sure I cover this bottom slide there. And now my camera is ready to take photos. Now this camera does come equipped with the Carl Zeiss Tarsar 35mm 3.5 lens, which is a very, very sharp lens. How I attach a strap is I screw this to the bottom. This has a little slot where I put this long piece of paracord, screw it to the bottom of the camera, and there you have it. Enough of the fancy specs. Let me show you a few photo samples from this camera from a trip that I took to Puerto Rico.
So from the tropical temperatures of Puerto Rico, we now go to the freezing temperatures of Alaska. Yes, I decided to take a trip to Alaska during December, the winter in December of 2021, I should say. And uh, yeah, not the most ideal place for a point and shoot, but I got to hand it to this camera. It survived the freezing temperatures, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this camera survived. Yeah, uh, <laughs> did not freeze at all, no performance issues. and. No permanent damage, at least from what I can tell. Now, due to the freezing temperatures, I couldn't really take a lot of video while taking photos in Alaska, but here is a small amount of footage that I was able to salvage and a ton of photos from the Shiga T4. <laughs> I am so cold. I can't feel my hands or my feet or anything. But the view is pretty. That's as much as I can do. Here we have Pam making her moves. Here we have Guy trying to unfreeze her hands. Okay. Cute. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> we have Chelsea and Kimari. Video. Say hi to the camera. What's up, y'all? My hands about to freeze. That's small gimbal. This next trip that I want to show you guys is a trip to Peru. Um, I've been all over the country of Peru. Uh, I think I want to start off where I took this camera up on a mountain called Machu Picchu. Let me show you some photos along with some footage in Peru with Yoshiga T4. Now the story as to how I uh, broke the back door on this camera, I had a roll of film stuck in here. It didn't rewind all the way so I had to go in a little dark room or dark bathroom in this case to take the film out of the camera. But I don't know what I did. 
Um, whilst retrieving the roll of film out of this camera, I just managed to snap the door completely off of the camera. I turn on the lights and see that this camera is now in two pieces and of course I uh, <clears throat> start yelling expletives in a public bathroom in a hotel lobby in a different country and I was yelling in English so we're fine. But of course I did manage to patch this thing up. Um, I asked the front desk for some uh, tape. Surprisingly they had uh, electrical tape to my luck and I patched this thing up so I was able to use it all around or all across Peru um, during that trip. So now that you've seen the photos that this thing produces, is it worth the hype? Is it worth the price? I don't know. I think this camera is really like any other point and shoot in my opinion. The only reason why it will stand out for me is the uh, super scope here on top. There are other point shoots with waist level finders out there, uh, so you don't have to pay a ridiculous amount of money for this one. Just go and overpay for a generic point and shoot because film cameras nowadays are bananas. In prices now is this camera weatherproof boy is it weatherproof yes it is weatherproof it survived the freezing temperatures of Alaska I'm pretty sure I dropped it in snow while there uh -huh. and then in my opinion the most brutal conditions that I've took this camera through was in the desert of Ica in Peru um, there is still sand in here I can I can hear it, it even survived that surprisingly so yeah it, it is pretty weatherproof now this camera is still kicking till this very day and I do plan on using it a lot more for many trips to come and I'm very excited for you know the photos I'm gonna get with this thing and that is pretty much it for this video let me know what you guys thought about the Yashica T4 let me know what you thought about the photos that I got about the footage that you saw whether you want a Yashica T4 whether you don't whether you would um, pay a ridiculous amount of money for a point shoot like this or if you're happy with the stuff that you already have because you don't really need stuff like this Anyways, um, that is it, goodbye.